such a fast time until we meet. Yeah. That's great to meet you. That's really great. Oh, good. You should have said that when we were on camera. <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> she has two chances, so oh, okay. she can do it out in the next one. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> it was such a good movie, and what oh, I good. found the most, the most interesting was that I think it will play with the audience and with their imagination. What was your inspiration? Uh, well, inspiration in that kind of movie, I think, you know, of course you're inspired by a lot of great filmmakers, and I couldn't name many, but I think the main inspiration for this and for Rasmus who wrote it is, you know, life. <laughs> it's uh, what you go through in life. I mean, my first film was very much about, uh, you know, coming of age, being, you know, going from a, a child to, 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 to uh, matureness, to, you know, in a, in a small area, small arena, in a small society, you know. I was, this is five years ago, I'd grown a little, just a little bit older. And now these questions are, you know, you know, sort of, I would say polluting my mind, but at least, uh, you know, uh, in my con on my conscience. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And Nikolai, what hits you the most on the screenplay? What was your motivation to join? Well, I think that I, I had an emotional response to the story. You know, it captivated me. It was very um, mysterious. Uh, but at the same time, a very simple story, a very simple story about a guy who is so afraid of, of, of losing control, losing himself, um, afraid of the future that he decides to, uh, but he wants to live, right? He wants love, but he's so afraid of not being able to control. So he decides to take control by killing himself. And I thought that was an interesting dilemma because he really wants to live. And then why make that choice? And then... His journey is basically to find his way back uh, to some kind of acceptance that life is, you cannot control it. And I think it's also that thing where we're more or less the same age and uh, you go through life and you're younger. <laughs> yeah, well, we look the same. <laughs> but you go through life and you, um, and you reach my age and then you've, you've had those moments of, of, of mm. life can sometimes be overwhelming. Yeah. And sometimes you can just be hope how the, I don't know how to make heads or tails and I'll be I've never been in a situation like Max where I just would rather just you know take the take the no, I was not going to say the easy way out but you know finish it in such a way but I can understand I can I can uh, and I'm you know uh, empathize with him so that was the thing and then of course it's a it's a it's a script that kept surprising me yeah. and how much emotional attached get you to him well, hopefully, uh, when we were when the camera was rolling, I was getting very close. But but uh, that's that's the objective. <laughs> but uh, no, it's a it's a job, and you go in and and, and you know it's uh, you know it's these are separate beings. I look a lot like him, but but uh, it's a different character. And the scene I loved the most hmm? was when um, Max's wife or girlfriend tries to bring him to love. Um, what is your trick to bring somebody to smile? My trick, yeah. it, I don't, oh. it happens for him. He does it all the time, but he doesn't know. I mean, it's just his. his <laughs> it's just uh, yes, you know. That's a good question. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I. Can. I mean, I was just walking through the airport in Zurich with him, and I turn a corner, and then I see him standing there, and his wife is tying his shoelace. But <laughs> well, that makes you smile. Yes. Well, that's how do you make people laugh? You exactly. didn't know you were, but you're like this. What do you mean? Is she that, asked me. If isn't that normal that your wife? Isn't that normal that your wife ties your shoelaces? <laughs> So well, I thought that was funny. Uh, so, but he, yeah, he makes people laugh all the time, <laughs> to his to his own surprise. <laughs> exactly, that's the thing. And what was for you both the biggest challenge during filmmaking? I think the the thing is the whole movie. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the thing is the movie is is told 100 percent from Max's point of view, and I think which is such a great thing but it also is challenging both when you shot it but also for the viewer because uh, what's real and what's in Max's head and you know you, you never know and maybe you know and and we had a lot of discussions about that when we shot it because it's um, uh, when you dream a dream it's real until you wake up you go oh, that was a crazy dream but it, you still felt every moment of it. And of course, for Max in this movie, he feels everything. Mm. Um, but I think maybe that's more, that was for me more the challenge of, mm. of uh, letting, I had to let go of my own control and saying, well, it's okay that this 
is very surreal because it's real for him. It might not be for me. Um, for me, I think, you know, that there's, of course, the physical, how do you say, conditions in, in making a movie that, you know, takes place in the mountain and tricky weather and those kind of things. But actually, I would say what I thought would be the most tricky thing was actually to get, you know, for me, not so much because I to, uh, to find the, you know, the emotional tone of the film. I thought that was, but uh, I have to say that, uh, you know, uh, Nikolai, I think you trusted me a lot. So, uh, and that gave me, you know, great confidence in doing it. So, for, so when I was, you know, from the first day of shooting, I felt, you know, relieved that that, you know, that tone was, was actually succeeding. Um, so, but besides that, the most difficult thing was the, or what actually turned out to be the most difficult was the physicality of the locations, uh, the practicalities in that. And the location looks so great. Mm. Um, how was it to, um, for you, the set and... Uh, no, I think, I mean, I, it, it, I, you know, I love it when you go out and you are in actual locations. I prefer that much more to, to being in a studio because it lends itself so much. You're standing in, when you're on the top of a mountain and like where the hotel was, well, it's, it's there, it's real. It, you can, you know, you can grasp it, you just react to it. Or if you're in a snowstorm or if it's, it's negative 20 degrees, then, you know, it, you don't have to act cold. You are cold. So now you're gonna go and change to the next, what's happening? No, no, go on, go on. Four, um, four minutes left. Okay. Um, <laughs> and what kind um, of emotional journey could the uh, audience expect? I think it depends on what audience mm -hmm. and what, what your life experience has been before you come into the movie. I think it's going to be very different, uh, which, is, which is like, I guess, for most movies, but this in particular, because it's such a... Um, specific journey in one man's life and a specific time in his life um but i think whether you we've all had moments whether you're young or you're old have moments of despair of emotional pain and i think that is something we can all relate to and i it is a you know a guy who is trying to deal with uh, emotional pain and do you have a little advice for the for the audience because they get so um, emotional attacked during the film? Uh, advice, um, I would say that um, have an open mind. <laughs> Try to, uh, you know, uh, don't have any uh, pre, uh, preconceived. preconceived, you know, about anything, actor, setting or anything, theme, thematics or anything. Try to be open minded and hopefully the, the journey of Max will you know, take you through the, the, the story. Mm -hmm. And to the set is, of course, a little bit uh, smaller than on the Games of Thrones set. What, yes. what was for you the biggest difference between um, American industry, film industry, and the Danish film industry? Um, language, no. <laughs> I think that it's, it's um, I mean, if you talk about something like Game of Thrones, of course, it's such a big, epic thing, and it's it's got thousands of people in, and, and size is the difference. Um, but I've done independent American movies that are smaller than our movie, and I've done big... I mean, at the end of the day, you have a camera, you have a director, you have some actors, and, and then you tell a story. Um, obviously, the movies we see in Europe of... American movies are usually the big blockbusters. They travel. And the movies of Europe that they see in America are usually the few big, big European movies that make it across. So we have these ideas that American movies are a certain thing or the other way around. And, and the fact is that it's as diverse as it is in, in Europe. And uh, what is expect of these all of these years? Um, I had the biggest impression or the biggest um stable time for you? The biggest what, sorry? Uh, the biggest express or the biggest impact on you? Of, of what I've done over the years? Yeah. Well, it's it's sitting here right now with you. This is <laughs> this is the moment. <laughs> Everything was building up to this. <laughs> and sitting and looking and you're here. I know. Oh. I think that was really it. No, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think that you know, whatever you're working on is seems to be the one thing that you, you're focused on. Um, but um, 
yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a time when I'm going to sit in a in an armchair and look back and go, oh yes, back when I did that interview in Zurich. And where's Jonas? That was great. Where's Jonas? What happened? To <laughs> what happened to Jonas? <laughs> we left him in Zurich. We've, I'm sure. <laughs> this is it. So much. Thank, Thank you. you.